Sun's going down, just about to disappear. First stop at the Waybridge. Checking I'm not making a mess of things. Morning, Holly. There we are, we can Ah, you bugger. Good morning, Vietnam. What a cracker. I've been dragged out my pit this morning. There's cattle going away. It's half five. Whoa. I'm not a farmer that gets up at five, six in the morning every morning. I wish I could say that, but I can't. Here comes the boss man with a trailer. Zero five eight five oh one nine. Job done. I have been sent a gift, a seven one eight Vario replica, one to thirty two scale. Look at that! What a beast! I'll get that in next to New Holland. Thank you very much, Gordon. What a cracker! Everything moves on it. Link arms move. The doors open. Bonnet opens. Top link moves. This beacon's taped to the bottom to go on top. Add to my collection. Right, we're off. This isn't the replica anymore, this is the real thing. I waited to cut winter barley, hopefully get three fields wiped out today, all going smoothly. Just about to get shifted, heading to a field up the back there, and just go out onto the road and away along a track. Kept shifting the reel, and I left the pin here on the sprayer, so I'll just come to grab it. There we go, pin in, good to go. Right, we're rolling out. Dunk's just, there's a wee gap in the hedge there, he's gonna go that way. Another reason why we pick tracks on that combine, if you go tires, it's basically another foot wider, makes the machine a foot wider, because they sit out where the tracks, because they're quite shallow, they tuck in under the combine a bit more. Pretty tight down here. This track is not built for that combine. Gonna clean up your looks with all the lies in the books to make a citizen out of There we go, open up the hatch, good to go. Field number one of the day, we're off. Load number one, off to the Waybridge. First stop at the Waybridge, guess the weight. We're not turning the dryer on today, so this is going to fill up quite a bit. Scott Agri are right over there. They're servicing the forklift and replacing the base of the seat, actually. This is a newer trailer than that trailer, and the perspex on that one, so there's a perspex sheet in there to view through. It's all scored and scratched, so we're needing to get a sheet of perspex uh, for that trailer. Probably needs done every three years or so. Either that or we'll get cameras in the trailer, so we have thought about it. You can get Bluetooth cameras that would go on the auger uh, of the combine there, then you might have a wee screen in the cab here and you're basically seeing the auger view because when you pull up next to it, the Bluetooth, Bluetooth connects you can see the auger view or what Dunk's view is right now you're down the auger uh, but in the cab so you can tell exactly how far back in the trailer you are If anyone uses anything like that, um, let me know There we go There's a few bits that aren't fully completely dead so there is quite a bit of ons through it but the dryer should take most of that out The ons are the wee sticky looking bits those bits. It's damn slippy in here. I figured out how to load the trailer and not make a meal of it now with that fin. So, so I'm getting the back of it full. The back, the back bit's the hardest bit to fill because it's furthest away from the cab and you can't see it. Just try not to leave a big hole at the back and get as much as you can in really. Fin looks good, doesn't it? Combine's going well, sun is shining. This is the perspex I was talking about. It's not too bad in this trailer because this is only new last year. It does start to score. I don't know if you can make out the streaks in it there. And that just happens all over and then it's kind of misty and foggy and it's hard to see. It's just a couple of nuts and then this slides out so you can put another one in. Charge home with this load, come back. By the time I get back, Kev and Dunk will have shifted to another field and then I'll give Kev a lift back up to pick up his tractor. Combine's just ahead there. I'm gonna pull in here just until it gets sorted out. There's the boss, checking on things. Checking I'm not making a mess of things. Right, we're in about field number two now. There's a few dark clouds kicking about, so hopefully they stay away. Trying to get emptied here quickly before we get to the trees. Should miss the first couple, or just brush them. Yeah, just nudging the trees. Smash. Raindrops. Oh 
wind is going lovely. Quite a lot of stew coming off just because it's so dry. All done here. Move on to the next. Got a reel on here. Head along the road to yard number four where we've got one more field to cut. We're off, field number three. As you're watching this, I'm just charging off to fill up. I didn't get this finished last night. I started doing it and then halfway through I fell asleep. So it's two o'clock now. I usually put it out about five and I've got gaps between loading and driving back. So it might be out of five. If it's late, that's why. Just sorting out boxes at the moment and an entrance sign. Tomorrow morning we're going to open up the new entrance so all the cars are coming in that way rather than the old entrance. It's starting to fill up here with barley now. There'll be maybe 150 tonne in there so far. Brothers blocked us all in. Anyway, there's a new sign. Suitable for sunflower time. It's all going plain sailing. I don't want to speak too soon. Kev's gone away to bail some end rigs. End rigs get run on and so any run on bits that get wet. There's not rain forecast but we like to tidy up the Hendrix fairly swiftly because if they do get run on, they're then a bit more compacted and they hold the moisture a lot longer. So it takes a lot longer to dry out. So the likes of that bit there, it's run on, get that bailed and then it doesn't hold the moisture. Whereas the big fluffy bouts like that, air can get in about it and they dry out fairly swiftly. That's the beacon on, so I'll go and get topped off. Beacon's at 70% filled in the tank. So he's got another 30% ca capacity. So I have a bit of time, I'll get him coming back down here. Fence been pretty awesome so far. I think I've got the hang of it. I've spilt barley yeah, a couple of times to be fair. Just pressing the wrong button or doing the wrong thing, but getting there. Oh, the boss, I missed it. They didn't spill any though. Right, I'm going to push this up. This has been serviced today actually and apparently it's got a new seat. Base. Oh yeah, look at that. We're back in action. Let's get a wee cover for that. Still not got the dryer going yet. Uh, just because it's so hot today, there's no point. Maybe sounds a bit daft saying no point putting the dryer on because it's so hot. Normally when you're drying, you're wanting to put hot air through it and to, to draw the moisture out. But the crop's not that wet. It's actually, the issue is it's hot. After a normal drying cycle, it then goes through a cooling cycle on the, on the grain dryer. There's not much drying to do at all. Maybe only 1%, half a percent, which is absolutely nothing. The issue is we're trying to get a crop down to low 20s uh, temperature wise, and the ambient temperature outside is mid 20s. So the temperature gradient isn't there to bring it down. The greater the, greater the difference between the ambient temperature and the grain temperature, uh, the quicker the rate of heat exchange. Like if you've got a hot mug of tea and it's zero degrees outside, that will cool down significantly faster than if you've got a mug of tea and you're in 30 degree weather. Anyway, let's get this right the way up, then head back, get another load of barley. Whoa, I'm on two wheels. Yes, I know I'm on two wheels, I can tell. Right, that'll do. I've made a wee bit of a hole there for Dad to tip. So far with the winter barley, I'm pretty happy with how it's coming out. The first field, this one, which we did yesterday, it yielded 3.7 tonne an acre. The next field, this one, which was the first we did this morning, it yielded 3.9 tonne an acre. Then field number three, it's also yielded 3.9 tonne an acre. And now we're into this field. We're on a different yard now, so we're not actually taking the weights of this, but it'll yield about 3.9. It's looking identical to the rest. Overall of it, probably averaged about 3.8, 3.85 ton an acre. 3.5's decent, we'll take it. Four's really good. So 3.85, 3.9, happy days. Sun's going down, just about to disappear. Nice picture of that though. Anyway, we're getting there. We've not got too much left. We'll be done in an hour and a half, two hours, maybe. So I've been messing about with this joystick, actually. So I've set this up to spool on the trailer. I've set it for the bed to lift and the back door to lift. So when I get to the shed, I just jumped across to here. Bang, I'm in action. You can see where we've been coming in, anyway. 
tyre tracks right in the door. Boom. Good lights those. And we are done. So it's heading home. We'll test the lights in here. Ooh, yes. That's us, job done. Decent day, 65 acres, 250 tonne, winter barley. Kev got a bit of bailing done as well, so fairly successful day. It's about 10 o'clock just now and we got everything finished that we wanted to get finished, so cheers for watching. See you tomorrow. I could hide neath the wings of the bluebird as she sings.